Welcome everyone, we are again with another concept in thermodynamic and statistical physics. Today we are going to discuss about entropy and the concepts related to entropy. I am Dr. Abhinav Bhargav from Faculty of Science, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences, Bhopal. Today we are going to discuss some basic definition related to entropy as well as one main concept related with entropy. Entropy is not just a word in physics, it is a word which can be helpful to explain many situations in the nature. So let us start with what is entropy. So if I talk about entropy, entropy is easily accessed or easily defined as the degree of randomness or degree of disorder. So what can be the systematic definition for it? If we want to discuss the systematic definition for it, it is the tendency in nature to proceed in a direction that increases the randomness of a system. If we talk about randomness, what it is? Randomness is the disorder or the free movement of the things that are associated with the nature. So a random system is that which lacks a regular arrangement of its parts. So if there is a disarrangement, if there is a more disorder, if there is more chaos, that means there is more entropy. This tends, tendency towards randomness is called entropy. This is the basic definition. If we want to understand it with an, another approach, we can discuss some more little bit that can be entropy can be defined in a simple qualitative way as a measure of the degree of randomness of the particles such as molecules inside a system. We all know that everything is made up of small, small molecules. These molecules never stop. They continuously move, possessing kinetic energy. Sometimes their kinetic in energy increases due to some factors like temperature, pressure. And these factors, when increases the kinetic energy of these molecules, we may say that the disorder has increased. So, what can be the one-liner definition of entropy? It is the entropy is the measure of chaos or disorder. I think that is the point we want to make it. If there is chaos in your personal life even, the term you can use is entropy. Let us move again. What is the statement of the famous researchers? The first one I am going to discuss is according to Clausius. Clausius? I think we should know who this Clausius is. So when I am talking about Clausius, he is the respected scientist called Rudolf Clausius who gave the statement for the explanation of second law of thermodynamics also. So his contribution to the field of thermodynamics is remarkable and that's why I have included this topic into my presentation. So in this, we are going to discuss what Clausius described about the entropy and what his particular statement was. So let us see what his basic concept regarding entropy was. So his basic concept was, if you want to describe a thermodynamic system, you have some parameters as your instrument. Let us consider or rename those parameters. They are temperature, pressure, volume. But can you complete the information about the system using all these factors? I think there was something lacking and that lacking was remodified or reassigned by Clausius in terms of entropy. So if you want to discuss the entire information of the thermodynamical system, apart from temperature, pressure, internal energy, you need one more quantity that is entropy. Entropy is denoted by capital S wherever you encounter this symbol in thermodynamics that is related to the entropy, the degree of disorder. After that, there is one more important statement given by Clausius. It is the entropy of a substance is the physical quantity which remains constant in reversible adiabatic process. If I term adiabatic, that means there is no interaction of energy with the outside world and the energy is confined within the system. That means there is no transfer of heat properly. There is no transfer of heat in the adiabatic process. Moving ahead, I will be talking about concept of entropy. When I am discussing this concept, I need some more equipments. Let us talk about some states. Let us consider we have state 1 and state 2. As you can see, state 1 is the ordered one and state 2 is the disordered one. What you need to change the state of a material of a system is actually the temperature. And temperature is changed when heat is followed or heat is given to the system. So the next part will be comprising that we supply heat to the system. So let us consider that entropy of state 1 is S1 and entropy of state 2 is S2. What we are doing further? We are trying to supply some more heat to these systems. Let us supply heat to the state 1. 
what will happen after some time you will see that the kinetic energy imparted in form of heat is increasing the motion of the molecules conclusively increasing the entropy so how do we calculate entropy or how do we mathematically prove entropy it is very simple the change of entropy is defined as it is equal to heat absorbed by the system divided by the temperature of which at which the change in entropy takes place if it is being difficult we can have another approach to understand it let's let us do it it is also explained as if heat is dq is transferred at constant temperature t then change in entropy is s2 minus s1 as you can see here is equal to dq by t where dq is the heat absorbed and the constant temperature we are maintaining is t where s2 and s1 are the entropy of the state 2 and 1 so if we are denoting the change then we will reduce the entropy from the state 2 entropy minus the state 1 entropy the answer is ds we represent this ds term to signify the change so ds is equals to dq or t or mathematically we can write it as t dot ds is equal to dq this is also termed as second law of thermodynamics in terms of entropy and this is the most significant formula you are going to pursue in thermodynamics when you are discussing about the thermodynamical properties and potentials moving ahead we are going to discuss that what will happen if there is a reversible process what will be the change in entropy so let's focusing on that we will discuss what are the new phenomena or what is the new conclusion we are going to discover so let us see what we have firstly i want to define what is reversible process a reversible process is which which can be repeated and get back into the same state present in the same conditions or the systematic definition can be the process which can be completed in reverse order as in the exactly same states in which it has been completed in direct order it is called reversible process a one liner definition again for reversible process it is actually an ideal process an ideal process the one which we consider for reference so another model you know that is considered as ideal for reference is the famous carnot's engine given by sadi carnot which works on the carnot cycle so let us consider a carnot cycle that is reversible so what that cycle seems to look by it is like this so you can have it in many parts we can see a graph between pressure and temperature pressure taken on y axis and volume taken on x axis when we are discussing this pressure and volume we plot a graph which represents four process in carnot cycle that is defined from point a to b b to c c to d and d to a in a to b you can see that this is isothermal process that is isothermal expansion in b2c you can see that it is adiabatic expansion in c2d it is isothermal compression and in d2a it is adiabatic compression in isothermal processes the th temperature is constant and in adiabatic process the change in heat or the heat supplied is zero or the change in heat is constant that will be very helpful to understand this concept that is the change in entropy of a reversible process let's move ahead from a to b it represents isothermal expansion in which heat q in is absorbed at temperature t1 so what is the increase in entropy using the previous formula it is q in divided by t1 and we already know that b to c and d to a represents adiabatic process so there is no change in entropy in these both the process according to the statement of rudolf clausius moving ahead we have another process of isothermal that is c2d which represents isothermal compression in which heat q out is rejected at temperature t2 so what will be the decrease in entropy at this point it is q out divided by t2 again if i want to calculate the total change let's calculate it if i want to calculate the total change using these two expression that one is the increase in entropy another is the decrease in entropy i can further proceed with the total entropy hence total entropy of complete carnot cycle is q in divided by t1 minus q out divided by t2 what is the further thing we know in an irreversible process the entropy change may be different inside the two states but 
when we are talking about a reversible process according to the efficiency of Carnot's engine and heat engine we can find a relation called Q in upon T1 is equal to Q out upon T2. Substituting these values in the above portion in this one we can find a very conclusive result. What is that? Let us see. The change in entropy ds is the subtraction of the increase in entropy minus decrease in entropy and since these increase in entropy and decrease in entropy is same for reversible process they will be cancelled out and the final change in entropy will be zero. What that concludes? Let us conclude with a statement. Hence, there is no change in entropy of a system in a reversible process. So, whenever you consider a reversible process also known as some ideal processes, you are not going to have any change in entropy. What is the one liner for that? Let us see that also. Entropy of a system in a reversible process remains unchanged. That is the conclusive statement for this topic. I think we have learned this in a very systematic way and I am pleased to present some more data, more information in the upcoming part. This is Dr. Abhinav Bhargav from Faculty of Science, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences, signing off.